Next up, we have Umea Institute of Design from Sweden with Nume Personalized Nutrition. On that note, uh, hello, my name is uh, Lena, and together with me to here today is Janre, Joanna, and Andre, and we're representing Umeå Institute of Design from Sweden. Today we're going to talk about something that's very important to all of us, and that's food. One of the biggest challenges in today's society is helping people understanding the connection between lifestyle related diseases and what they eat, or rather what they don't eat. Because when such a significant number of people can say that they think it's easier to figure out how to do their taxes than figuring out how to eat healthily, we have a problem. So one fact is that those information printed on the food packages is quite cryptic for most of customers. And people don't understand it and what it means to their bodies. So getting feedback from how food we eat affects us is quite lagging. And especially in contrast to other aspects in our life, such as uh, if we touch something hot, we will instantly jump back in pain. And also quantified self is a big trend today. But our data provided by tracking devices, it's really hard for us to understand and also left this user feeling lost. So the challenge becomes that how should we bridge the gap between daily meals and its long-term effects to our bodies? So how can we address those issues? During this project, we became very passionate about translating nutrition into actions. Because if we see information about grams, milligrams, calories, we don't really know what does it mean to our body. But if we tell you, that you are a little bit low on potassium and that might be the reason you are feeling tired and you can easily fix it with bananas, you are much more motivated to take actions. One of the core goals that we had in this project was to try to combine the knowledge and the competence of the pharmaceutical companies together with a nutrition specialist and place it in the hands of the end user and in their very own home. In this way, the end user can have more control and uh, create a consciousness about their own nutrition. One of our end users were pregnant women. We found during our research that a lot of women find themselves in an overload of information both prior, during and after pregnancy in a lot of dietary restrictions. They were often told what not to eat rather than what to eat. We also spoke to nutrition specialists about how people develop habits in, the, in the, what they eat. And we found that people decide what to eat based on their taste, their preference in food. So we asked ourselves, how can we create a system where we maintain or allow people to eat the things that they like, but at the same time keep it nutritious and healthy? With this in mind, we created NUMI, and I invite you to watch our concept video. Food. We all love it, and we all need it. But understanding what to eat in order to get the nutrients that you need can be hard. And sometimes in life, you might find yourself in a situation where what you eat makes the greatest difference. What if there could be someone who could help you with this task? Someone who could always be there to keep an eye on you. Someone who lets you know what your body needs. This is why we created Numi, your companion in creating your very own personalized nutrition. Numi learns what you like to eat and what you don't. She gives you tips on what you eat based on your own preference. Numi, I don't feel like rice for dinner after all. That's fine. What about tortilla with roasted vegetables? 
Oh, that's perfect. Okay, you start with cutting up two tomatoes, half a cucumber, and some salad. Sometimes, a varied diet is not enough to give you all the nutrients you need. Don't worry, Numi's got you covered. She will create Nutri Drops to supplement your diet. Numi can offer you support wherever you are. Hi Numi, I'm going away for three days. Could you please print me the Nutri Drops I need? No problem, Frida. Through touching the Nutri Patch, she can let you know how well your body is doing. Numi and you are a team, and together you explore what food and nutrition means to you. So, what makes Numi unique? Numi takes care of you from the very beginning. Johan and Frida, you met during the video, went to a website and answered a couple of simple questions. And that helped them assess which kind of set uh, that Yumi can provide will fit their lifestyle. Yumi was shipped to their doorstep along with instructions. Nutri is a flexible system that adjusts to the user. In Johan's case, it consists from Nutri Patch, which analyzes his blood values, and Nutri App, which he might go to to get uh, in-depth information. Frida needs uh, some more support, so uh, besides Nutri Patch and Nutri App, she is also using NutriMaker, which 3D prints her NutriDrops. NutriDrops provide some extra supplements for people who need support at the time. In Frida's case, uh, it's because of her pregnancy. NutriPatch is a layer of second skin, which provides uh, users with overview how they are doing. Um, we provide feedback, uh, tactile feedback, uh, which is based on the metaphor of human skin. If we are not eating healthfully, it might become rough or we can get a rush. So where does CUI and AI come into this? If we look at the current systems and applications on the market today, they require high levels of user participation. They're always nagging us, asking us to input data, and it's quite intrusive. However, with CUI and AI, we're now presented with the opportunity for these systems to learn and take advantage of, of who we are and adapt their functions accordingly. With Numi, we became very interested in making, uh, using CUI and AI to make the system non-intrusive, so that she goes into the background of our daily lives and adapts according to the user's needs. But how does this look and uh, how does it work? Well, you remember Johan from the video. He also uses Numi. And she's noticed that he's a bit low on potassium. He's also complained that he's a bit tired, and she's also aware of the type of food that he's been eating. So she realizes that a simple solution to this could be some bananas. But how does she communicate this to Johan? Well, she does this in the form of goals and recipes. She informs Johan that if he eats five bananas this week, this will increase his potassium and will probably alleviate his fatigue. She then recommends a number of recipes. She knows that he loves pancakes, smoothies, and muesli, and recommends a number of recipes which allows him to integrate a banana into his weekly eating habits. If he likes these suggestions, she'll add it to his shopping list. But this is not enough. We also need to have feedback. If users are going to change their eating habits, they need to understand how it is affecting their body. Numi does this through two touch points. As Joanna mentioned, the tactile patch will give users an overview of how they're going. But if they want a more in-depth analysis, they simply go into the application, application and Johan can get an overview of his blood work and the long-term trends. In doing so, Numi creates a feedback loop, which motivates users to make uh, uh, better lifestyle de decisions and educates them in understanding what nutrition means to them. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Uma. Lisa, would you like to start? Um, you don't have to. <laughs> uh, great project, beautiful presentation, um, really rich space to explore. And you, you took on so much. In some ways, um, I don't even know where to begin, because it, you. Um, the, the scope of what you created was so large. Um, and maybe the problem uh, kind of warrants that. I don't know. I mean, I was really m taken by, uh, I think from the, even before the video, 
this idea that you could get um, instant feedback about something, um, about how food would affect you, and those icons, and actually Bill commented, <laughs> um, there was something, you know, I feel like there's so many moments to explore, and uh, again, I appreciate the sort of the breadth of what you created, but I also I think there were, there were moments, you know, sort of smaller moments that could have been kind of drilled into in, in more depth, too. Um, but overall, uh, I mean, we, we all need something like this. Um, the, I guess the, the conversation, if we're talking about that, seemed to jump around to diff many different forms, so I'm also curious how to reconcile that. I mean, in the end, it comes back to, you know, my body and the, how the food affects me. But um, that, uh, yeah, so that, that maybe that's one struggle of just how to integrate the many components of the experience. But overall, you know, incredible, and I hope something like this um, <laughs> is um, possible in the near future. So I have two questions, and you can choose to do one or the other or both. But the, the one is, I'd like to know what your picture process about the research you did so that you can separate um, what's foreseeable just through engineering as opposed to some deus ex machina, magic happens here solution. So what uh, in the foundations for the chemistry and the printing and all these other things. So that, that's an interesting thing that um, would help take it from science fiction to to something that's actually a plausible aspiration. And the second would be um, how to put this, can you imagine this scaling down? Because the people who could afford this are probably the people who at least need more nutrition. They probably have an excess. And so there's other parts of the world where nutrition re actually is even more drastically um, problems. And can it scale to that? Do you have, have you thought, talked about that part? Can talk about research first. Yeah, okay. um, so we did explore that aspect, um, and we tried not to base it on magic, uh, but rather things which are researched right now. Um, 3D printing peels, it's feasible now. Uh, creating them uh, in the maker printer uh, is also feasible, not in the size we present. Uh, but experiments like that are taking uh, place in Great Britain right now. Um, so all the components we used will be feasible in the future. Uh, also the patch. Yeah, the US Army is developing a patch that does exactly that um, and actually also administers the vitamins, the supplementation, transdermically. Um, in regards to the second question, we were looking uh, at like what our target was, who we wanted to kind of, um, I guess, uh, yeah, the, for the system to apply to. Um, and in the context in which we created, we actually did about uh, over five weeks of ethnographic research, and we were based in Umeå. Uh So we were targeting uh, the general population. Um, in terms of scaling down, I mean, that is something that I would have loved to explore. Um, however, with the resources and time, uh, it, it's not possible to cover such a breadth. But it's for, it's for sure something that could be applied in some manner or form. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, again, congratulations on a great presentation. Um, I found uh, one of the things that I thought was actually kind of brilliant about your presentation is this identification of the problem of healthful eating healthfully but being a feedback problem, of there being a gap between immediacy of action and sort of long-term of effect. Um, you know, I think a lot of products can be defined by the feedback that they give, whether that's the buzz of a button or an image that flashes on the screen. And that, thinking about food as a feedback problem, I thought was a really great insight. Um, one thing that I, I thought, though, is that the project could have uh, benefited from kind of becoming less rather than more, right? That by scaling back recommendations and by scaling back touch points, you almost clarify the fact of trying to give that feedback. Whereas if the feedback is too ubiquitous, it ends up becoming sort of a wall of information that becomes hard to act on. Um, so that was just one question I had. And a little bit echoing on Lisa's point that kind of the vastness of the system, which I think was really well considered insofar as you thought about what kind of feedback loop would create a virtuous cycle. 
I thought that you could actually make each individual uh, leg on that stool actually a little bit smaller so that the product would be a little bit clearly def more clearly defined. Mm -hmm. Still time? A little bit. Um, I, I think when year after year, I've, I've done this a few times, um, it's always effortlessly good how video, how the video quality and the storytelling has improved over the years, by the way. So it's like, I don't know if it's, it's gotta be that we're all getting better at it. Um, but like the video was actually like almost commercial quality. You had like actual acting going on in there and like moments of drama and emotion. And and it's, it's always worth pointing out how difficult that stuff is and how, you know, just the design of this device looks quite advanced, the, the idea of the patch with this roughness as a little twist on the design idea that it's giving you feedback as a little like a rash. I mean, there's some, some real moments of, um, of joy and kind of nice kind of creative ideas in there. Um, and I just wanted to commend you on both the presentation, the video, and the sort of executional high-level thinking. So, well done. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Matt.